Hello world, it's Siraj. In this video, we're going to write a script that reads in a data set of movie ratings, then recommends new movies for a user in 40 lines of Python. We are in the midst of a new renaissance right now, and the reason for it is data. In the past two years, we've created more data than in the entire previous history of the human race. Your options to learn or experience or create are limitless on the web. This is awesome. Oh my god, I'm going to throw up. But all of this abundance presents a problem, the paradox of choice. Because we have so many choices, we could spend way too much time trying to pick one. We could end up not picking anything at all, or worse, pick something and then get FOMO, or fear of missing out. If there was a way to have an abundance of options and have certainty in our decisions, that would be ideal, right? That's how recommendation systems help us. They use machine learning to go over all of our options, learn what we like, then recommend which option we would like best. And they're getting insanely accurate. Like they know us better than we know ourselves sometimes. Amazon recommends products we'd like. Google recommends search results we'd like. Facebook recommends friends we'd like. Pretty much every service does it now. There are two main types of recommender systems, collaborative systems and content-based systems. Collaborative systems predict what you like based on what other similar users have liked in the past. Content-based systems predict what you like based on what you've liked in the past. And some services like Netflix combine both approaches to be even more accurate. So let's write our own script that recommends movies a user would like. We'll install our dependencies, then write our script. We're going to use three dependencies. Both NumPy and SciPy will help us do some math. And LightFM is a library that allows us to perform any number of popular recommendation algorithms. We'll start by importing NumPy and call it NP. LightFM is a big library, so we're only going to import the submodules of it that we need. We'll use the from import combination to import specific methods from submodules as necessary. We'll import the fetch movie lens method from the dataset submodule in the LightFM class directly from LightFM, which will later create a model for us. Now that we've imported our dependencies, we're going to fetch our data set. Let's create a variable called data to store our data set in. We'll use the fetch movie lens method we imported earlier from our LightFM dependency to fetch our data set. The movie lens data set is a big CSV file that contains 100k movie ratings from 1k users on 1700 movies. Each user has rated at least 20 movies on a scale of 1 to 5, so hopefully they gave this a 0. I'll create a GUI interface using Visual Basic, see if I can track an IP address. The fetch movie lens method takes in an optional parameter called min rating. Min rating is the minimum rating we want to include in our data. We'll set it to 4.0, which means we're only collecting the movies with a rating of 4 or higher. So this method will create an interaction matrix from our CSV file and store it in our data variable as a dictionary. A dictionary is a way to store data, just like a list, except instead of just using numbers to retrieve data, you can use anything. In our case, we'll use strings. Our fetch movie lens method splits our data set into training and testing data, and we could retrieve each by using the train and test strings as keys. We'll print out both. Let's quickly see what this looks like in terminal when we compile it. It'll print out both our training and testing matrices. We can see that our training data contains 10 times more items than our testing data. We'll store our model in a variable that we call model. We'll initialize the LightFM class using a single parameter called loss. Loss means our loss function and it measures the difference between our model's prediction and the desired output. We want to minimize it during training so our model gets more accurate over time in its predictions. We can choose between several. We'll go ahead and choose a loss called warp, which stands for weighted approximate rank pairwise. Warp helps us create recommendations for each user by looking at the existing user rating pairs and predicting rankings for each. It uses the gradient descent algorithm to iteratively find the weights that improve our prediction over time. This takes into account both the user's past rating history, content-based, and similar users' ratings, collaborative. It's a hybrid system. Now that we have our model, we can go ahead and train it. We'll use the fit method of the model object to train it. The fit method takes three parameters parameters, the data set we want to train it on, the number of epochs we want to run the training for, and the number of threads we want to run this on. For our data set, we use our data dictionary we created earlier and point it to the training data using the train string. We'll set the number of epochs or runs for this training session to 30 and the number of threads or parallel computations to 2. Now we want to generate a recommendation from our model. To do that, we'll write a sample recommendation function which takes three parameters, our model, our data, and a list of user IDs. These are users we want to generate recommendations for. First, we'll get the number of users and the number of items, which are movies in our case, using the shape attribute of the data 
dictionary we created. Now we can create a for loop to iterate through every user ID that we would input and say that we want the list of known positives for each. LightFM considers ratings that are 5 positive and ratings that are 4 or below negative to make the problem binary. Much simpler. We'll get the list of positive ratings from our data in compressed sparse row format. This is a subarray inside of our data matrix which we'll retrieve using the indices attribute. Next we'll generate our recommendations and store them in the scores variable using the predict method of our model. We'll use the user ID as the first parameter and then a list of each movie. The A range method of NumPy will give us every number from 0 up to the number of items so we can predict the score for every movie. Then we'll sort them in order of their score. The argsort method of NumPy will return the score indices in descending order thanks to the negative sign. Let's go ahead and print them. First we'll print out the user's ID, percent %s will convert the ID to a string, then we'll print the top three known positive movies that the user has picked by creating a for loop ending in the third index. Lastly, we'll create one more loop for printing the top three recommended movies that our model predicts. We'll call it at the end using the model data and a list of three random user IDs as the parameters. Each user has movies that they like listed as well as movies that our system has recommended for them. So to break it down, recommendation algorithms help us make this decisions by learning our preferences. There are two main types of recommendation algorithms, content-based and collaborative. And lastly, LightFM is a great library to get started with building recommendation systems. The winner of the coding challenge from the last video is Rohan Verma. Rohan went above and beyond by creating a web app where you can search a topic and it'll list a bunch of tweets on that topic with highlighted sentiments, badass of the week. And the runner-up is Arnaud Delani well-documented and well-defined methods. The challenge for this week is to modify this code so that instead of using the default fetch movie lens method, you'll write a new method that fetches and formats some other recommendation data set. Train it on three different models, compare the results, and print the best one. Post your GitHub link in the comments and I'll announce the winner in the next video. Links to everything in the description. Please share this video and subscribe for more programming videos. For now, I've gotta wonder why Yahoo still exists. So thanks for watching.